Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO The Lasses of Europe. By now you probably know who I am, but I'm a guy who likes smokers. But right now the noise of thunder. It was a dusty morning in the bush the other day. Doom came from the sky. Distant horn sounded from behind the clouds and it was the den of the seventh seal being broken. And the boars looked skyward and exalted for they were simple folk. Dirt farmers one and all. And recognized the signs of judgment day. They waited with goosebump flesh for the loud voices from heaven to proclaim the world becoming that of the kingdom of God and his messiah and the salvation of their immortal souls. It was then that the infernal things came from the sky, and the horns were joined by guitar and drum and a voice like wailing, and the farmers cowered at what they now recognize as, as their destruction. The sky lit up like the pits of the abyss, and the fire rained down upon them, and smoke filled the air, and ghastly filth poured over the land to with it all it touched. Through it all, the farmers shrieked and cried as their lives were being ripped from their bodies. Some sought to comfort loved ones. Others begged for the Lord's mercy. Men, Young men ran the futility as the elders kneeled and awaited the brutal heat and sudden de cold of death. In but a few short minutes, life was wiped from the bushveld, and not a one of them remained to see the American commander lean out of his helicopter to taste the air. He breathed deeply out of smoke and of ash of his creation, and he knew it was good as he gazed upon the blasted landscape, devastation undreamt of by any ancient warmaster or Khan. The commander looked to the vastness above and said a silent prayer to the same god the boars begged to save them as they burned. He made a signal and the helicopters left back through the smoke, blasting their music as they left the created annihilation and its piles of black ash behind them. Ash had once been men who had and dreamed and loved. Later, they would learn that Intel had been mistaken, and the village was not the rebel enclave they thought it to be, but by then, they had moved on to burn other villages and other lands, and it mattered little to them, and was soon forgotten. One fire fights one fire. And of course, we're doing American Talent. If you want to read that again, please go ahead. And I can't remember what we did last time. Larger shipment of American resources at a higher cost. Um, I think we, I want to go with technological advantage. Our universities have been turned into research centers working closely with the military and arms industry and fully dedicated to the developing new ways to get our boys any advantage they can get in the field right now. A task force has been established to modernize and refine the equipment of our infantry with aims of improving the troops' performance in battle. And to make their efforts easier, we must give them all of our support. And right now we're doing really well. Like, like we're doing very, very well, I'd say. Maybe not perfect, but... Oh, the fall of Windhoek. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's, actually, that is good. We just took it. Good. If you want to buy this, please go ahead. We have some comms to go through as well, but we got some guys to encircle and destroy. Because as someone did say in the comments below, be it Boer or ANC, defend South Africa to keep it free. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Alright, so we're just going to go all the way over here. I want to circle that helicopter division, destroy it, and other divisions too, so. Technological advantage. Would you look at that? Keep these guys in place, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, th thank you, thank you. Keep these guys here as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You guys get your butts in there as fast as you possibly can. The country needs you. Mason beamed as he strolled down from home, downtown. Strolled home. Not even the sweltering summer heat could bring his spirits down. Never before in his life he had felt so integral, so paramount. For credit underneath his arm was a folder containing several documents. Documents which would alter his life irreversibly. He was going to make a difference for once, and he could scarcely wait. Pa emerged from a city. When he heard the boy close the door shut, immediately his attention honed on to the folder his son brought home. And the aging man's wrinkled features had flashed with an old fear. How was class, he asked, knowing full well that his son had not just returned from school. Well, Pa, I didn't go to class today. Mason stammered. He found confidence after bre breathing deep. Me and the lads went down to the recruitment office instead. We're going to find the war to shut those darn boards up. We'll send the Huns packing all the way to Berlin, too, he finished. Puffed and expectant of the congratulations Shirley sent his way. Instead, Pa planted his hands on both Mason's shoulders. Gosh darn you, Mason. The man cried, shaking the boy to and fro. Do you know what you've done? you know what happens to boys in war? This is no sport of joining. I thought you'd be proud of me serving the, our country like you did, Mason retorted. Why could his father be so craven? What the heck's wrong with you? Listen to me, son, his father pleaded. You're no killer, you're a boy. And boys marched gladly off to war only to die without ever firing a shot. The boy would hear no more of this. Well, maybe if men weren't such cowards like you, we would have won the last bloody war, he screamed, before he shook his father's hold off and stormed out from where he had just been moments ago where he entered. Mason slammed the door as he broke into an aimless run away from home, tears streaking down his face and frown. Cradled underneath his arm were his last possession, the documents accepting his application into the South African Defense Force. Mason turned out will make a difference. Darn his parents if they thought otherwise. Carry on, my wayward son. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Let's burn some more boars. Until we play as them, then we'll be burning <laughs> more than boars. Um, at this point, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to keep getting expanding diamond mines. Like We're going to keep expanding until we can no longer expand, so... Yeah. Do we need any equipment? Already sounds pretty good. Yes, we do. Thank you. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. At this point, they don't... Hello. Hold on, let's slow it down. Uh, they don't have that many divisions left. Or at least the line is looking really good for us for some reason. And our allies are just, like, expanding all over the place. So, this is getting a little crazy. At this point, I guess we just... 
go, maybe? Just go? So we'll see what happens. Cool. Alright, Truckerinos. Actually, I only need one of you to do that. Yeah, there you go. Do something like that. So you're gonna circle these guys, kill them off, you know, all the good stuff. Hopefully we do well here. That'd be great if we could do well. Because, oh, a small failure. Oh boy, Mason stood near the edge of his bed with his crampled cabin packed with young men like him doing likewise. Though they assumed it at ease position, each gave the other uneasy looks, ready to snap in place the moment a word of command echoes across the cabin. <clears throat> A quick swivel showed that most of the platoon had his station in pristine condition for inspection. Mason's was not, which was caused for the panic bubbling within him. He'd forgotten to maintain his locker to the inspection standard today, and by the time he realized such, he was out of time. Labored breaths left the grunt's chest as he dreaded the instructor's inevitable reprise. Or reprisal, at least. Cool. He's coming, Whisper shouted a platoon mate as a lone figure approached the cabin door. Mason's eyes joined several dozen other pairs in fixing the riveted metal abyss with rigid stairs. The boy felt his heart hammer against his throat. Then the door burst open, revealing Corporal Volslo's, uh, Voslu's no-nonsense frown come to ruin their already short spirits. Platoon, attention! The corporal barked. In unison, they stomped their heels together and stood ram rod stiff. The instructor paced from bed to bed, searching meticulously for every flaw one could imagine and then some. Mason could do no such thing but stay ahead, though his ears cut the increasingly loud shouting. First for a dusty bed frame, then stained the floor tiles he, uh, the next, and so on. Finally, the corporal stood in front of Mason's own bunks. Beads of sweat poured out from the boys every pore as he did his best to tamper with his breath. What the heck do you take me for, Private Turner? screamed the corporal, and it's a preferred... A pronounced Afrikaner accent? A moron? N no, no, Corporal, replied Mason quaveringly. Turn and look pro closely, Private. Mason snapped his back around. Surely enough, the disheveled contents of his personal locker came in full view. The seconds felt like hours as Mason endured yet another re relentless barrage of loudly de delivered insults. Maybe Corporal Vaslu was right. Maybe he really wasn't cut out for those life. For this life. Maybe Paul was right after all. Hmm. I've been wondering about that. This is good head. Choma? Well, oh well. They will die like men, as they all do. Because we are quite fragile things, if you really think about it. We are quite fragile. So, combined, they have a total of 17 divisions. We have 37. Under pressure. Mason and the company proceeded. Through the sweltering heat of the high veld. With trucks at a premium, the grunts had to lug their heavy weapons kits upon their backs as they tried to keep up with their slow-moving convoy. Worse still. The trucks kicked up puffs of dust while they moseyed along the dirty, dry road. What he wouldn't do to get rid of the thin coat clinging to all the sweat on his bare sunburned skin, or finally, move away from the hills flanking either side of the road. Maybe if he closed his eyes, he'd find himself back home in. A violent explosion shook him to the core, up ahead. A great cloud of dust, dirt, and smoke billowed from the lead vehicle's burning wreck. All the vehicles came to a halt, hitting each other's bumpers from the suddenness. Rifleman tossed their kits aside and prepared for contact. Contact came as bursts of machine gun fire from the steep plateau rain hill, raining steel down from th the disorganized column. In the confusion, men struggled to discern the direction of gunfire until shots began to echo, and the hills get behind the trucks. It's coming from the hills, men screamed. As they scrambled to take cover where cover was found, rocks, trucks, brush. Mason quickly followed suit. Drivers in a frenzy dro dove out of the trucks to take cover from the hail of bullets. The boar seemed so far away, yet so close at the same time. As Mason watched the armored vehicles pull out onto the side of the road to turn, return fire, he could only think to himself, how could I have ended up here? God help me, I'm only 19. God, I would love to be 19 again. I'm I'm getting old. Jesus, I'm getting old. Ugh. It would help if I did give him orders to us like this. What to be 19 again? Some of you guys watching, I know are not even 19, but you're making me feel old already. Stop it. <laughs> um, so the only stuff? Remove. Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Remove five cities, five millies? Ooh. That's instead of developer tactics. South Africans must realize that they face an intelligent foe. The Germans have challenged many stronger powers and brought them down, including our mother Britannia. Therefore, we must too learn how to fight efficiently against the Germans and to bring them down before they do the same to us. No limitations must must be put in place against their officers. Let us push them to think of better methods in the field to theorize, to theorize, and to be creative, for without passion and resourcefulness, our land will fall to the swastika. Transport rifles, trained soldiers. I mean, honestly, like, this stuff is all not bad. Um, attack bonus against these guys. That's not bad. Gather the Iberian commandos. Why not? You know what? Advise South African troops to get more attack and defense. I like that, too. Uh, roads. Extra diamond a month. So we get 30 diamonds a month. So we can keep doing that one again and again and again and again and again. And I love it. I love it. It is great. 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 There goes the Corky Tink Brigade. If you guys could keep these guys in place, that'd be awesome. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Where are you at? You're just kind of roaming around, huh? Come on, boys. Keep on moving, 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 moving and grooving. Come on. Not bad. Not bad. Got some coffee to keep us nice and warm. 
All we're building is with infrastructure right now. It's not bad. We have a ton of GDP. Bogged down fronts, huh? No longer, my friends. No longer. They have 15 divisions max now, which is very good. All right, guys. Would you like to hurry up here? Or... Nice. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good about this stuff right here. Cut them off, cut them off, boys. If we cut off two more divisions, that'd be su stupendous. Stupendous. Super bueno, as some might say. Oh, it's a little bit ahead of time, but whatever. I already clicked on it. It's not even 65 yet. Look at that. All right, let's get some more guns. We're really going to need more guns to help cover and hold all these areas here. So, Nice, nice, nice. Diamond mines? Screw it. Keep getting more diamond mines. Look at South Africa. South Africa is beautiful. Another comment was, or asked me if I was going to play Japan when they get more content and or bug fixes in the toolbox theory. And my answer is up 100% because I've played them before. They have way too many events in the beginning, but like I said in the last episode, but like, I would love to play Japan again sometime. When it's better, but yeah. Developing our tactics. Uh, women in the military, do we believe in that? We can. Let's do approve our Air Force. We will not see victory in this war if we cannot take to the skies. Our Air Force must be given every kind of support so that we may prove superior to the Germans and not merely reliant on the Americans. If we commit to this, then we can raise the intensity of our resistance, support our ground forces, and ruin the enemy's ability to sustain their forces. Better wings will prove to be strong enough to clip the Luftwaffe zone. If you want to be with us, please go ahead. We will fight on. We must. We will. We always will. We need more guns. We need way more guns, which is not good for resistance. Jellico, hello, Jellico. Guns, 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 baby. Only 500? That's not enough, man. We might get some stuff from up there. Um, how's artillery looking? Anti tank is really bad. Artillery is really bad. 250. Ah, uh, get the anti tank for now. It's fine. It's just all the resistance, man. That's that's literally all it is. That's good. We lost 106,000 versus 420,000. Nice. Hey, Sweet West Africa. Nice. Still got worse some planes, looks like, for the most part. Um, look at all... Look at that. When they capitulated, look at all the manpower we lost. We lost 40,000 more manpower just trying to garrison territory. That's ridiculous. Oh, let's not do that one. That costs more stuff. Let's go this one. It's almost 65, everybody. Another comment was, play as the UK or play as the Queen of England or, you know, the UK or basically Canada. Play as a monarchy. I don't know, they don't have content yet. Eventually they will, so I would... I, at that time of this recording, I've played almost every single nation that has content already. Oh, we've even got... Jesus Christ, we've got South Africa. Look at that, that's beautiful. Well, yeah, like, I'm basically planning on doing every single country at least once. Some countries I've already played twice. Of course, like, America and Germany, I've played like three or four times already, but still. You guys come over here and help kill these guys off. Look at that, we lost another about 40, 50,000-ish manpower because of just garrison stuff. Insane, man. Nope. Nope. We go big and go home. More infinite roads. And they'll probably buy some more guns. Improve our Air Force and... Ooh. We need both, huh? Well, that's not too bad. Build up military industry, then. That's fine with me. This war cannot be won merely with the spirit of our men. This land is one of the effort and will, and such effort must be used in the name of victory. Building up our industry will give us more ability to keep us in this war. It will also help us build up our forces, replace our material losses, and it will bring confidence among our allies that we are not fully dependent on their support. We must expand our war machine and produce so many rifles that we only have to rely on ourselves. Followed up closely with... The South African military. Our armed forces are the instruments of our state security. In a war such as this, it is our obligation to not only sustain all of them, but to improve them in, in the air, on the ground, or upon the seas. South Africa must fight to be victorious against any threats to our sovereignty. Our troops are our shield and our sword, and they will fight as their fathers have fought in the wars before. No matter the cost, no matter how long this war may go on, South Africa will prevail, and Bennett has just been elected. Good luck, America. Keep making more cities, because we keep we just converted some of these guys, so. There you go. Making more cities for now. Cool. Rifles? Let's get some already first. Good god. We need 15. Oh my gosh, 15,000. Holy crap. Can we just pay them not to be rebellious? Nope. There you go. Nice. Leopoldville will fall. They have only five divisions. This is a, this, this gone a lot better than I thought it would. Then again, it's not on hard mode, so what do you kind of expect? 
Oh, there goes the old Vanguard Brigade, American Tech. Uh, I'm not sure if I read this before, but I'll worry anyways. The U.S. is eager to give us some of their best to our nation. They're willing to share with us technology behind their latest armored cars, their finest planes and helicopters, and their most advanced gadgets. Such gifts must be used extensively and tr tried to extract the maximum potential advantage. The Germans are going to be shocked when they see how far we can go with these American tools. Absolutely. Get some more factories. Oh, we can... Oh, yeah. Guns. Infantry equipment. Oh, that's so good. So good, man. Um, go with... We, 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 we just need rifles, man. Holy crap. Factories. Go with that. Holy crap. We need so much. Share the wealth. Share a lot of the Jesus wealth. Holy crud. America, can you please give us more supplies? We could really use them. 3 to 5. Still not bad. You guys aren't even on the front lines, which sucks, but whatever. Please take that state. That stadt. <clears throat> There you go. Yay! Oh, no, Hadrish, no! No, Hadrish, no! Wait, maybe I shouldn't be vo yelling win, Hadrish, win, when he's doing stuff here. Uh-oh, did we win? The war is won, my friends. It truly was a mark of the modern president of warfare to bear witness to battle which stressed fiercely into the night. Just hours ago, the march of the infantrymen was coupled with gasps and spiders of tanks treading through the African bush, trudging through as the mud and grass as well as any pair of legs or treads could do, finally. As the men approached the compound, the sickening relief had dawned upon them. This was it. The war would be won or over after the night, and Nerea saw the strength to care about how many would have to die in order to destroy the Reichs Commissariats well, for once and for all. Hours into the artillery strikes, however, the true face of the butchery would alight as soldiers rushed beyond the setting sun to meet the strength of the African and the American. The gunfire lasted for hours, with some men beginning to bleed strictly from their destroyed ear drums, rifles, machine guns, anti-tank rifles, anti-aircraft emplacements, artillery barrages, tank shells, even flamethrower units have been used to destroy as much as possible and fight to the bitter end. Trenches hardly did a man good, as dirt and gore and limbs were capitulated into the sky from nearby explosions, while men shouted trying to gain gaining advantage over the enemy. All manner of soldiers descended upon the final battle. As Americans and Africans, both black and white, met Valmok, Schutzstaffel, and mercenaries in this final stand, some only leaving bones behind in the aftermath of the gunfire and decimation. However, eventually the Germans broke, and after the frigid African night descended upon them, and it was only then that the compound remained vulnerable. However, as light descends upon a world of sin, so do does the rising sun bathing the, bathe the men of war. No longer was the African continent plagued with the German plague. Finally, victory has been achieved, with no Rex Commissar to say otherwise, with everyone drearily enchanted with the thoughts of the future. A bold Whole new future awaits us. And just in Oh no! No, what happened to our focus? I wanted to read the other focuses before we got that far. Look at that manpower we got back though. Look at that. The recognition of the claimant. Will you solemnly swear to the Archbishop of Cape Town? To govern the people of the Union of South Africa and its corresponding territories according to its respective laws and its customs. I solemnly promise to do so, said Elizabeth II, recognized by many people in South Africa as a rightful queen whose ascension was prevented until recently by unfortunate circumstances. The belated ceremony was held in Cape Town with many notable government officials in attendance. Many more people had lined the streets to watch the procession, and a larger number watched these events live on TV. South Africa had never held a coronation of its own, with their ceremony being combined with the rest of the Commonwealth when the monarch took the house or throne in Westminster Abbey. Thus, they decided to recreate the ceremony in Cape Town, once her oaths had been taken. The Archbishop presented her with the Holy Bible and prepared for the most sacred part of the ritual. Why is Holy Bible not capitalized? The Queen, who was up until that point had been still referred to as Princess Elizabeth, since she was so technically a princess, went to sit in the Governor General's chair as her for her anointing. She was presented with the arm mills, uh, stole royals, robe royal, and the sovereign's orb, followed by the queen's ring. The sovereign's scepter with a cross and the sovereign's scepter with a dove. All these had been given to her before, but for they were the same ones used in her coronation in Canada, but this time it was official for South Africans. Finally, St. Edward's crown was picked up by the archbishop, who held it aloft over her head. The second he set upon her head, the vacancy of the South African monarchy was ended. Immediately, a 21-gun salute was fired outside and the crown chanted, Thrice God save the queen! Peace at last, my friends, which I'm a little disappointed that there's really not much else for South Africa. I would love to have more content for South Africa, but they will probably get more content later on. And we did see uh, that Bennett was elected in 65. But, and you know what? Actually, the war, the Civil War is still raging in Germany, which is kind of weird. But, yeah, I'm kind of okay with that. But, hey, I guess that's going to be it for us. There's, as you can tell from this, and so Desk approaches a new order. Oh, look at this. Oh, let's read this one. Supposedly a constitutional monarchy, South Africa has been unable to crown a monarch due to the competing, competing claims of the British throne. It has been forced to keep the position vacant as it tried to navigate between the Pact and the OFM power blocks. However, 
With the victory in the South African War and the firm placement in the OFN, South Africa has agreed to recognize the OFN back claimant, Elizabeth, as a queen. This move is a popular one with the South Africa's ruling United Party and the primarily British support base, which heralded it as a step forward away from the recent past and towards a brighter future in the OFN. At least confusion's over. But hey, like, if you enjoyed the video and the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.